In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests used in the assessment of thoracic outlet syndrome, and that is the Roos test, also called the elevated arm stress test. So to perform this test, the patient can either be seated or standing. I'm going to be demonstrating this in the seated position. And the patient's going to actively bring their shoulders up to 90 degrees of abduction and 90 degrees of external rotation with the elbows at 90 degrees of flexion. So the starting position will look like this. In general, you can have the patient's hands open. The palms will be facing away from the patient. And the patient's then going to repetitively open and close their hands for three minutes straight. So you should probably get a timer out. So it looks like this for three minutes minutes straight. Now, a positive test in general is reproduction of familiar symptoms. However, there's a number of other things that you need to look for. So in general, some signs and symptoms that you may see are a gradual increase in pain at the neck and shoulder progressing down the arm. Again, remember that we're getting compression of different nerves and other structures, and so the pain is going to progress proximal to distal, okay, in general. Also, inability to complete the test, or if the patient drops their arms in distress, unable to hold their arms up. Again, either of these last two bullet points could be due to pain, or they could be due to muscle weakness. Remember, if you're getting compression of nerves, especially ones that have a motor component, then the muscles that are innervated by those nerves will become transiently weak, and the patient will be unable to keep their arms up during this test. Also, there's some other things indicating a positive test that are specific for different types of thoracic outlet syndrome. So remember, we have neurological, arterial, and venous thoracic outlet syndrome, depending on which structures are being compressed. So if the patient experiences upper extremity numbness and or paresthesias, such as burning, shooting pain, or tingling, that would be more indicative of neurological toss. If the patient experiences arm pallor with the arm elevated and then reactive hyperemia when the limb is lowered, that would indicate more arterial toss. And remember, arm pallor is just where the arm starts to lose its color. Okay, so for example here, if my arms got wider and less red, that would indicate that blood flow is being cut off to the arms, indicating an arterial compression. And then when I lower my arms back down, uh, you get reactive hyperemia, and so they get an overflow of blood, and they get redder or pinker than they would be before you ever did this test. These would be indicative of arterial toss. And then if the patient experiences cyanosis or swelling, these would be more indicative of venous toss. Now, in terms of the psychometrics, it has a moderate sensitivity and a very poor specificity. So the Roos test should never be used to rule up thoracic outlet syndrome because the specificity is only 30%. However, the sensitivity is all the way up at 84%. So if the patient has a negative Roos test, there's an 84% chance that they do not have thoracic outlet syndrome. Out of all of the special tests for thoracic outlet syndrome, this one has the highest sensitivity. Therefore, I would recommend using it first in an attempt to rule out thoracic outlet syndrome. But again, you cannot use it to rule in thoracic outlet syndrome. Again, whether in seated or standing, the patient will bring their shoulders to 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of external rotation, with the elbows at 90 degrees of flexion like this, and then repetitively open and close their hands for three minutes. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.